Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. This is Photoshop Elements Weekly, episode number 19. In this show, we're going to talk about backing up solutions for your pictures, how to create an abstract picture, and what exactly is an abstract, mobile photography on the go, also mobile editing, and how to share your mobile pictures to the web. So let's go ahead and get started with Photoshop Elements Weekly, episode number 19. Okay, so I hope everybody had a great week uh, this week, this past week. Um, seems like a lot of stuff is going on. You know, summer is coming into fall, and um, and I don't want to force that and make that too fast for anybody, but that is the truth of it. The um, the actual fall is uh, coming upon us, so there's going to be some interesting pictures out there to take. And uh, when you get out there to take pictures, um, basically, of different colors of trees, I'm sure if you have climate change in your area like we do here, uh, you'll know with the different seasons come different uh, changing of the colors and everything of the leaves and the foliage. And it's really, really good time to get out there and get some pictures taken. And, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about this and about mobile photography and what it is. But first, we're going to look at a couple backup solutions. And the first one is a backup solution that I use all the time. Um... Now, not with all my pictures, uh, and if you've seen it, you've seen that some of the pictures are there, but not everything I've taken. Um, they should be. You should have pictures there that everything you take because it makes a great backup. And when you're backing up online, you're uh, making sure you don't have a catastrophe in your house. Something happens, a flood or, or worse in your house, and you lose your computer and your hard drives. It's good to have everything backed up online. So the first thing we're going to talk about here, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up is the first site that I truly uh, enjoy using and I use it a lot and it is flickr.com and if you want to look at my photo stream you go to flickr.com slash photos slash jacks photos I was thinking somewhere I need to change that to jacks tech corner but for now uh, it is what it is <laughs> so I mean they're on there We'll go ahead and uh, switch over here so you can have a look. And this is just some, uh, you know, me uh, always doing some self-portrait work there. So this is some self-portrait stuff that I worked on. And um, actually, uh, these are the way to share your pictures. You can share them on this site as well as backing them up. Now, backing up on this site, all you would do is when you go to upload your pictures and put it into what's known as a set. I'll show you sets here. This is actual sets. Now, in the sets, what you're doing is essentially is making yourself some photo albums. And if you pay for the pro account, which I'm not really even sure how much the pro account is because I do have it. Um... I was trying to see how much it was because I think I might have misquoted it at one time. Maybe you guys know in the chat room how much it is. Uh, I'm just seeing if we can see it here somewhere. And I do not see. Boy, you would surely think they would tell you how much it was, huh? I guess since you already have it, they don't care. <laughs> um, they don't care anymore how much... Uh, you're paying because you're already paying for it so yeah I'm not sure uh, how much it is off the top of my head try to look under my account and yeah I can't see anything in there but actually we're getting into and we're looking at Flickr because it's building on to the rest of today's show uh, it says I am a pro I'll just say extend my pro account and see how much it is oh there it is a one-year contract will cost you $25. So right there it is, $25. And two years is $47.99. So they give you a little break. That's how I should start buying it, actually. I should start paying for the two-year instead of the actual yearly contract. But what that, like I said, allows you to do is unlimited uploads, unlimited storage, and 
most of all, what's pretty important is unlimited sets. And it's interesting because we're, um, we're getting together. A lot of you know that we are getting ready to go on a vacation. And um, the last vacation I actually went on, the last cruise I went on, um, is still in here. And that was, I believe the wife said the other day, 2006. Um, so this is our cruise photos from 2006. And uh, you see they're still there. And I've lost these a couple times on my own hard drives. I've done it. And I know people say, Jack, you've done that. You're out of your mind. You don't lose stuff. But I have. I've, I've lost a few things. Um, so I was able to go back and retrieve those and pull them back to my local hard drive and be uh, good and fine with those. Now, I can tell you guys, if you're going to sign up for Flickr, um, and I have to point this out to you, just stop over at my website, Jack's Tech Corner. Even if you want to try it out, there's a free version. Try the free version out. But Flickr is actually, um, Yahoo and Flickr is actually sponsoring the show right here at the bottom. So just click on that little graphics and go ahead and sign up for a Flickr account. Once you do that, what I want you to do is become a member of a group. Here's the groups. Here's my groups. And then you can become a member of the group. There is a Jack's Tech Corner group. There's 18 members in it. So go ahead and join that group. It's free to join. It's not going to cost you anything. You can be a paid or pro member. It doesn't matter. As well as the, um, I got like the Nikon D80 group. And it's nice because you're sharing pictures with um, other folks that use Nikon D80s. So what's nice about that is you get a lot of feedback from your pictures. Um, and watching Facebook recently, I noticed that everybody out there is um, wanting feedback. And um, we know that because <laughs> we've seen a lot of people working on some pictures here recently. Um, I'm going to look this up real quick because I know everybody knows what I'm talking about that's following the Facebook group. Uh, if you're not on Facebook, join Facebook and join the group Jack's Tech Corner. And again, it's very much it's free to join. Uh, hopefully I can get logged in here. I didn't hit a wrong key. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm going to bring my computer back up here because I want you to see this. Uh, I thought this was really interesting. Uh, Deb Raffler, and I don't know if you're in here this morning, Deb, watching the show. Um, but yeah, I thought this Facebook stuff has been getting really, really interesting in the fact that um, pictures are getting posted and you guys are sharing ideas with each other. This is the greatest thing I've ever thought I've seen because it's showing that we are all working together. Um, you don't just wait for me to get on the air or, or watch my YouTube videos anymore. And I'm learning from you guys how you're changing these. It's great because I'm learning things. Here's one here. It's a set of uh, Deb it was using different canvases, uh, early morning fog. And if you look at some of these pictures on this Facebook group, Here's early morning fog, which that's a great shot. And then there was this lighthouse. I went to a uh, retirement party the other night, and they said, Jack, we get so many updates for Jack's Tech Corner on our Facebook. Update, 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 update. And I think it's kind of hilarious because what it is, it's actually um, you guys updating this lighthouse. Uh, this lighthouse has become one of the greatest topics on, uh, on the Jack's Tech Corner group. Uh, look at all the different backgrounds you guys have been putting in there. Look, I mean, this is just amazing stuff to see how many times that lighthouse actually changed. And then there's just a ton of other uh, pictures of your work. And there's borders on there. You can see there, if you look at the top of that lighthouse, see how it changes. Uh, lights are on. Lights are off. How interesting that is to pick that out. You guys have so much um, ability to pick out the art part of anything you look at and change it. And I think it's wonderful. And it's great you're watching the show. Hopefully uh, today some of you will call in and uh, give us a little bit of a... Um, you will give us a little bit of feedback about uh, maybe how you did that or how you went about changing these pictures. And uh, we'd love to hear that. Also, I'm going to give a shout out there to my friend Kevin. Kevin, uh, we're actually, uh, if you look at that chat room you're in right now, at the top it says go to live.jackstechcorner.com. 
So if you go into there, you can actually come into the new chat room that we're using. So you can follow along there. The uh, Justin TV chat room gave us a lot of trouble. So we kind of pushed it off to the side. Uh, we no longer use that. Uh, we're using a little bit better chat room that seems to be more stable. Okay, so that is one um, online solution. I'm sorry we got off track a little bit with the Facebook thing, but I just thought it was really nice how you guys are putting pictures up there. And that's kind of how the Jack's Tech Corner group works on Flickr also. Uh, people go in here and post pictures, and they, they share them with the Jack's Tech Corner group. So it's the same kind of deal. There is another place you can go to back up your pictures. And it is called Dropbox. Now I believe Dropbox, when you first start out, I think they give you two gigabytes of free storage space. Two gigabytes of free storage space. But you can use that, and you can use Dropbox to actually store pictures on. As well as you can share pictures. So if you want to share pictures for free, uh, this is my Dropbox. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Open Dropbox folder. So here's my Dropbox. Now the way Dropbox works is when you drop a picture in here, say from your laptop, if you have Dropbox also installed on your desktop computer or your iPad or your iPhone or your, um, your Android phone, you can actually sync those pictures across all of those devices and it works very very well now to share pictures you can actually share pictures share sharing pictures in a folder on there called public so anything you put into this public folder and it gives you a little example in here how to use the public folder anything you put in that public folder you can actually use that and give somebody a web address and they go and actually see that picture right on that public folder. So it makes it a nice way to see you can, you know, what I do with my mom is we've just put a permanent link on her desktop. She clicks it and every now and then the pictures open up and she can have a peek uh, what would be in there. Uh, of course, I, I've moved everything to Flickr, but that is another way to do it. You can also store all your documents in there. You can have your documents and everything in there also. Now, we all know as a group that we uh, are here and I got yelled at last week because I took phone calls somebody emailed me and said Jack you're wasting time taking phone calls from people um, you're wasting precious time and not showing us enough Photoshop elements um, and I asked the guy to please remove himself from my my viewing list um, because here's the here's the key I do these to help you out if you're going to pick up a camera and go shoot birds and you think that I have an answer for you how to shoot birds better, then call this show and I will answer that question. We are not here just to look at Photoshop elements. That's what we uh, primarily use to edit. But we are also here to help each other. And that's why I paid for a phone number so you guys can call in. So don't be scared away by that email. Um, so, And I don't know if the gentleman's still watching or not. Anyway, enough said about that. Hopefully, I can remember my password to sign in here. Oops. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the computer guy forgets his passwords every now and then. That does happen. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Good. Now, another place you can store your pictures and kind of back them up is through your Photoshop Elements. And I know I've showed you that before. We can click on you, click on sharing, and share it right to Photoshop.com. Whenever you buy Photoshop Elements, you get your own site, and it makes it really easy to share pictures. And the personal URL here you can see is jackstechcorner.photoshop.com. You can look, and I don't know what I have in there right now, but you can definitely take a peek. Pittsburgh 2009 Girls. Now, I, this might be, uh, this is when we took a trip over to uh, the city in Pittsburgh, and uh, we took the kids out probably during, yeah, November, probably during the hype of the uh, Stiller Nation movement. We would go into the uh, city and, and buy, you know, clothing and whatever at uh, really good prices on the, uh, on the strip is what it's called. So, so you have this little photo gallery running, which is great. You can add somebody as a friend to it. Um, but this is another great way to share your pictures with people.
you can click on photo album and we can pull up an album here and there you go now I didn't explore some of this with the uh, rotation and stuff you see some of these pictures need rotated uh, we're gonna click on just to see how you might do that I know I worked with my daughter on Facebook one day and we were trying to turn a picture for quite some time actually okay I'm see I'm not sure how to turn the picture it's really interesting there's nowhere does it say to edit so I'm not sure how to do that okay well <laughs> I'll have to look into that or if you guys see it maybe you have to turn it in Photoshop before you send it up there and that'll get you started um just going to take a peek at the chat room see what's going on there uh let's see kevin hey kevin you made the chat room good to have you in there uh jessica's back jessica nice uh, nice pictures of the kiddos sleeping in the car that was <laughs> they were boy they were wore out from your trip man i tell you what and and uh, i'm sure our kids will be wore out here of course our kids are a lot older than yours now so but uh, they should be wore out pretty soon also uh coming back from our trip and i'm just seeing here good to have you back june june hey june i'm glad you didn't forget this week good to uh, have you in there so yeah jessica it was great uh we want to see some pictures from your crews i'm sure you're still working on those and uh, i'm sure you're still trying to get those up and uh, online it does take a little while to do that okay the next thing we're going to do here is we are going to, and I didn't even have that in the show notes actually, so this is an added bonus. I went ahead and I created a video um, for YouTube that I did not post. And the reason I didn't post it is I thought, well, I'm going to share with you guys first. We're going to stream it live. And then after I stream it, then we'll go ahead and post it to YouTube. Um, it was a video. It's actually nine minutes long. It took me two and a half hours to edit it. And uh, I don't know if you watched my YouTube video on iMovie and editing, uh, but that is the particular movie we're going to watch or the show we're going to watch. Um, like I said, it's only about eight minutes. Um, we're going to have a look at it. And what it basically goes over is how to take a picture um, of an abstract, an abstract shot. And I walk through that and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, because I also remember now, not just editing, we want to talk about photography here too and What's different ways to take pictures? And I know you guys have a great way of taking pictures. And it's funny because I was recently, I told you at a graduate, or not, I mean a retirement party the other night. And one of my photography students came over and handed me the camera and said, Jack, can you take a group picture of us? And I said, absolutely, I'd love to. She goes, well, don't worry, it's on automatic. <laughs> Here she, she took my class and has been shooting everything on automatic, which, which is fine. People do that. Uh, I guess the classes are mainly to show you that you, there's other options. So I am going to look here uh, for this video, and we are going to get it started. And we're going to have a look at this. And then after the video, keep your notes ready there, because after the video, we will go ahead and do some uh, call-ins. Let's see here what we got going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just hang in there with me for a little bit. Go ahead and watch this video. And as soon as I find it here. For some reason that's in the top of it there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and watch this video, and then I will be uh, right back with you as soon as it's over, and we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about mobile photography. <laughs> Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm here with Jack, and today is going to be a little tip and trick of a little bit of photography demonstration. And what we're going to photograph today is we are going to actually do an abstract photograph. Now, I'm actually doing this for my class, but I thought I would bring all you guys in my YouTube uh, 
my YouTube followers, my YouTube subscribers, and show you also how to do an abstract. So how we're going to do that abstract is we're actually going to come over and we're going to use this box of crayons right here. This box of Crayolas is what we're going to use for our abstract. Now, we're going to lay the colors out and we're going to actually photograph those. But as we photograph those, we're going to move our camera around. I have my camera here. It's my D80 DSLR camera. So we're going to take this camera and we're going to actually open the shutter up and we're going to give it some a little bit of what I call camera shake and see how that picture turns out. Now to do that, we're going to have to introduce a lot of light into our picture and light is very, very important. So here's what we're going to do here. I have a, uh, this is steady uh, photography light and we're going to turn that on. So this photography light we're going to use is going to help light the scene up so we can get a really crisp, clean picture of this because we're going to be using a long shutter. And I'm going to hand hold this camera so the shutter is going to be even longer. So first we'll take a couple still pictures and then I'm going to show you the technique I like to try to use with an abstract to kind of make it more abstract. So first I'm going to open the, ca open the uh, crayons up here. I bought these the other day at the store for about a quarter. The reason we want crayons, we just want colors is what we need. So we're going to lay our colors out here. We're just going to try to make some kind of a pattern with them. There's no right way or wrong way of doing this. We're just making a pattern with this stuff. So just laying it out like so. And again, no perfect way, you know, just like when you're a kid, you're throwing your crayons on the floor, right? You're just throwing them out there so everybody can use them. Um, do something like this. <coughs> and we'll see what we come up with. There, something like that. We'll get the box out of the way. We'll take our camera. And right now we set our, we're set on program mode. And uh, let me check the ISO setting. The ISO setting is at 100. I'm going to set it at 400. And we're going to take a picture, a couple pictures of this, just still pictures. Okay, we have a couple decent pictures. Now what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to introduce some camera shake into this. So I'm going to take the camera, we're going to set it on shutter mode, we're going to let that shutter open up longer and let and take that picture uh, and move the camera around a little bit. That's going to kind of blend our colors together. Kind of the same thing if you watch my videos a while back about doing fireworks. Kind of the same concept except we're not using a tripod. So let's go ahead and try this. So I'm going to set my shutter speed. see where we're going here. Let's go the other way. Okay, we're going to try it this way with an F22. Should be a four second delay on the shutter. Now, as you can see that time, I moved the camera around. I introduced some blurring into the actual, uh, the actual shot itself. Maybe you couldn't, but when I took the shot, I took the picture and I moved the camera a little bit. That's all it is. It's just introducing some different blurring into it. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to set that shutter speed up. We're going to try it at one, one second. Now, so that is definitely a way that we can get that blur into that, sh into that picture. What I'm going to do now is we're going to open it up here. We're going to go to uh, 25 on our shutter.
Now we're going to just try one now. Uh, we'll go back to two, two, uh, two seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to just do an in and out, just an up and down here. And that's pretty much the kind of shot that I was hoping for for this abstract. And there it is. That's the shot I wanted for that one. Now let's go back up to one second. Now it's getting more interesting. It's getting what I want it to be. Instead of twirling the camera, it's going up and down. So let's go to 2.5, a little bit faster shutter speed. So we're going to go to 2.5 and try one. Now we can start further up this time. It's too much. So you have to play around a little bit to get this right. Let's go to one second. That seems to be the perfect. And that's perfect. That's the kind of abstract shot that I wanted to get. So that's all abstract is, is just abstract. It's something different, something out of the ordinary. It's abstracted from life, I guess, is what you could say. So hopefully, um, I'm going to edit all this video together now. Hopefully, it's going to turn out okay. Um, if you're catching me right now, I'm on, I'll probably be broadcasting this live on Justin TV of how to edit a video down. Uh, so you get to see parts of it as I'm editing it, which is going to be something new that I'm doing. And hopefully, the audio worked out okay. Because as you can see right now, I'm using my lapel microphone just so I can work with the video and work with you guys. So thanks for joining me for this uh, little lesson in abstract shooting. And uh, come up with some better ideas of abstract and email those to me or put them on our Facebook page. Or let me know if you want one. You can now put them on our Google Plus page. Uh, just Google Plus to Jack and, uh, or Jay O'Corn it actually is. So I'd love to hear from you on Google Plus. And I'd love to hear from you on our Facebook page. And uh, if nothing else, catch me on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our live show on justin.tv slash Jack's Tech Corner. So until next time. Keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon on Jack's Tech Corner. Thanks, and bye for now. Well, there you go. Thank you very much for sitting through that uh, abstract photography. We are going to go ahead and uh, open the phone line. I see the chat room is going on there. Kevin's been uh, bringing up some good ideas this morning, and Kevin's been talking about, um, if you haven't been watching the chat room, Kevin has actually been talking about doing some uh, recipe cards and putting the picture of the, I guess, the person that wrote the recipe on there. Um, and I heard a, um, you're talking about recipe cards and pictures. Um, and it's funny because I heard a, a comedian the other day was talking about um, a, ph a photographer and I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, but he was actually saying, um, I guess he went to this restaurant and, you know, the food, how they take pictures and it looks so good and so, uh, delicious and everything. Well, I guess what happened was, uh, they got the, served the food and it was greasy and sloppy and undercooked and everything. So when he was leaving, you know, usually you'll leave a restaurant, you'll say compliments to the chef. Well, he was leaving and he told the uh, waitress when he was getting up, he said, ma'am. I like to give compliments to the photographer because he was able to create this beautiful shot from this slot that they were served. So I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, talking about photographers. Um, just catching up on the chat room also. Uh, Vicky, is there a way to search through Flickr to the Photoshop program for pictures? Is there a way to search through Flickr? No, there's not. You can't do it from the Photoshop program. It's two different online uh, entities. 
or would it also be better to store them on the computer? Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So no, you cannot open up Flickr, or you cannot open a picture in Photoshop Elements that is on Flickr. So that's correct. Store them on the computer, and I can't get a shot of it right now. I don't think I have any cameras pointing to it. Maybe you can just barely see it. Let me take this title bar down. Right here, I'll pull it out there a little bit. Right here, this is an external hard drive I have. I just put a two terabyte hard drive in there. And that backs up all my pictures and all my videos every night. Um, and then I also send it off site at that point. Uh, so I use Flickr for, you know, my most important stuff. I don't upload everything to Flickr. But the uh, most important stuff I do upload. And what I can tell you in, let's see if I can bring this up here. And we'll take a look at this. Um, I know most of you guys are probably maybe half and half are on Windows. Okay, and Jessica, you're talking about filters also. We can do a show on filters, I'm sure. Uh, we will do that uh, to put a show together on filters and how to use those. I do have a couple YouTube videos, Jessica, I think, I believe, uh, that has filters in them. So you may want to uh, look back on the videos through the archives. And uh, check that out. Say hi. Okay. I don't know how I did that. Anyway. Um, so that is on that. What I wanted to show you was. Um, okay. Don't update now. All right. What I want to show you. And I know. Um. <clears throat> In Photoshop Elements, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the organizer on Windows, you can upload directly to Flickr. And you can also do it, this is um, iPhoto, and I can also do this, I can select Photos, and click on Share, and I can send them right to Flickr also. Now this is on a Mac, this is iPhoto. Um, and the the actual organizer on the Mac is slightly different than Windows so I'm not sure so I don't want to show you there and kind of fumble around with it um, but you guys might know if it's on the Windows side of Photoshop Elements if anybody can throw that in the chat room maybe and correct me or not uh, I'd like to know that let's try and get rid of some of these windows now that we're done with so yeah that's the short of it uh, is that you would like to uh, um, keep those on the local computer and also put them on there and a polarized filter would accent would um, um, enhance the extra and Dan that's a good point and I wish I would talk to you before I sent that in um, I actually recently took an online photography class and um, I wish I had talked to you before I sent it in because maybe it would have uh, made it look a little different. But what they don't want us to do is when you send pictures in to be critiqued, they don't want you to use any Photoshopping anyway in it. So um, it might have been a positive or a negative. Negative, I mean, it would have been a positive if I was going to just hang that picture up. I think you're exactly right. It would have made a big difference. So what we're going to get into next, I don't know what kind of cell phones you guys have. And I've talked about it a couple weeks ago how... Cell phones today are taking place where the point-and-shoot camera was just two years ago. You know, everybody was carrying around a point-and-shoot camera in their pocket and their cell phone in the other pocket. But the cameras are getting remarkably good on these cell phones. And I understand the new iPhone 5 will have an 8-megapixel camera built into it. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty remarkable. So, we want to talk a little bit about... Um, shooting pictures with your cell phone and it's getting to be a big deal I told you last week I was reading up on Flickr or I was reading somewhere and it said on Flickr almost 40 percent of all pictures getting uploaded to Flickr right now is coming from cell phones so it's, it's a pretty um, pretty interesting uh, statistic to say the least now the reason I wanted to bring this up because it is still Photoshop there's Photoshop editing on these cell phones and it's free it's a very light version of Photoshop and I wanted to show it to you I also wanted to show you that you can edit pictures on your iPad if you have an iPad um, and as a lot of you know we've been talking about for a couple weeks here we're getting ready to go on a family vacation 
And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to take my laptop? I mean, laptops are heavy. They're bulky. They get in the way. I'm just not ready to cut off from that particular piece of hardware yet. But I have been playing around and found the iPad works very well for editing pictures. As well as, as well as the iPhone. We talked last week, some of my videos, the video you just watched was actually, the long shots were shot with the, the HD camcorder on the iPhone. I have this and I put it in a tripod mount. I showed you guys last week about that tripod mount. And I shot my video through the iPhone. But what is actually really neat with them is they have cameras on here. Now I did just recently buy, I read all kind of news and said, buy the pro camera app. And I said, well, for a dollar, it was like a buck 99 or whatever. I said, I'm going to buy it and try it out. And I must say it gives you more features than the standard camera application that comes with the iPhone. I'm going to try to show you this thing the best I can anyway, and we'll see how it looks. Let's try to set up a different camera angle here. We'll see. We'll see if we can actually show you this thing. Gonna have to adjust the microphone around here a little bit too uh, to see if we can't do this because this is so far away. So if you see right there on the bottom, it says Pro Camera. Or you might have to take my word for it. I'm trying to see if we can get it to focus. Uh, this is a webcam here to my right, and it's not the greatest in the world. But when I turn that on, if you can see that, there's two little squares in there. One of these squares, one square is for focus, and one square is basically for your, um, is for your exposure level. So it's pretty neat. As you can see, I moved the triangle, and it, the screen got a little darker because it sees as being a darker image or a lighter image and it darkened it down a little bit so it's adjusting the exposure for me so it's really neat so that's what makes this a, a definitely a uh, better application for taking pictures with and if you move that little square around that little square is actually made for your focal point so wherever you want to place your focus you would use that square Now, if you see, I put that right directly over that spot of light there, and you can see that the picture actually became more lit. Then you take your picture. You get the little shutter effect, too. I mean, we all know there's no mechanical shutters. It's definitely electronic shutter, folks. It's not a mechanical shutter in the uh, iPhone itself. Now, you say, Jack, that's all well and good, but, you know, I was with Verizon before the big switchover, and... I bought an Android phone. I guess I'm out of luck. Nah, you're not. Here is... Oh, actually, let me figure out. I'm still trying to figure out how to work this one. Figure that from a tech guy. Figure that from a tech guy, huh? Still trying to figure out how to work it. And I'm actually looking for it here. Yeah, there's a lot of people better with the Android than I am. Like I said, I'm still trying to find things on it. Still trying to figure out how to work it. Um, and actually you think they'd have it run the front page somewhere you know what I mean you would surely think so and I know I used it one day oh there it is camera so on this one this is the android and it also comes with the camera built in so it has a camera and on both of these it's really nice because unlike some cell phones they have an actual flash on the back. It's actually an LED flash, but they do have a flash. Here's the Android Galaxy. There's the iPhone. So you see they both have a little LED flash on the back. Not great for long distance photography, naturally, we know that, uh, but it is nice for some tight little close up stuff. Maybe you're inside of a building, uh, you need a little bit extra light, it does work for that. Again, it works the Works the same way. You just hit the little camera. It also has a little shutter and it actually takes a picture. 
Now, the reason I wanted to show you these cell phones and talk to you a little bit today about mobile photography is I take today, and I know it's bad because I teach photography and I love photography, I don't always carry uh, my camera around. It gets, uh, it gets extremely hard to carry this in your belt hoop uh, or belt loop on your belt. Or it gets hard, for, uh, ladies, it gets hard to put this in your purse, right? It gets very heavy. Now, luckily, I told you in the past, I do have children. And my children are the greatest uh, camera carriers I've ever met in my life. They'll carry my camera till the end of the day. Uh, so I usually get the camera on my shoulder. They carry the bag. I have a tripod carrier. Um, so the kid, in other words, the kids do a good job. But we don't carry these around with us every day. I mean, that just doesn't even make sense. We do, however, carry our cell phones around with us. Here is what I wanted to show you on a cell phone. If you, I don't know if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, but there is a program out there called PS Express. And guess what? It's free. That's what makes more sense. When you open it up, it looks like this. Again, we'll try to get some. There's either camera or select a photo. So picture is already on the on the cam on the uh, phone itself. We're going to just say select a picture. We go right into the uh, our our uh, album there. All of our pictures on the album. And I like to work in everything in portrait mode. I mean, these screens are so small. We're so used to working on the bigger screens that I like to work on the uh, portrait mode, or I'm sorry, the landscape mode, just because it gives me more real estate. If I click on it, or tap it, and then tap that little pencil, it opens up into our editor. Now, we can edit the picture and do some basic edits with it without ever putting the pictures on a computer. This is what's making mobile photography number one in America. People are getting to the point, now you guys are pros. All, everybody watching this show, you're a pro. Believe me, you're pro status. Because you can take your pictures, you can get them on your computer okay, you can uh, edit them down, we've practiced, and you can then upload them to websites. And you know how to do that. Some people, it's easier if I want to take a quick shot, then I want to change the exposure. I hit brighten. Change the saturation. Look how easy this is. All you got to do is drag your finger from the left to the right. You can do a black and white that easy. Anything you want to do to this picture. We can stretch it, soft focus it, sharpen it. You can add effects and borders. So there you go. That's a very, very easy way to work on your pictures. And when you're done, you hit save, and it's going to save a copy of the picture. We don't have to do anything special to make a copy, like do a save as, or uh, it's actually saving it down as a picture. Mm -hmm. And there we go. So it's saved. Now you hit that other button. Look, you can share it. The very top one there says, if you can see that, I'm trying to get this camera angle right. I don't know if we can read there or not. The very top one says Photoshop.com, which we just talked about in Elements, built in. Facebook, built in. And TwitPic, which if you're on Twitter, you would know that that is where TwitPic goes. So you can send it to the three major places that you're worried about. Uh, now the place you can't send it to we talked about is Flickr. Cancel that. Let me go under social here. And there's a couple couple different uh, actual um, 
And if you guys are watching my, um, if you're watching my Flickr page right now, bring it up. Remember, it's flickr.com slash photos slash Jack's photos. Here's a picture that we just edited. And this is a little program here I found uh, that allows you to upload pictures to Flickr. We're going to hit upload. It's loading it. It prepares the image. It's connecting. And it's uploading. So why on earth aren't you taking more pictures with your digital phones? Right? I know because they're not as great. The shutter speeds aren't as good. Uh, you can't manually adjust a lot of it. And you're right. But I tell you what. For quick pictures. You're at a birthday party. You want grandma to have a quick pic. Man, I tell you what. That's the way to send them out. Uh, and I wanted to tell you the Android phone has that same application. I'm trying to get back here to... Uh, my uh, Flickr page. You guys are probably already there and looking. And we are going to uh, flip back over here for a second. There it is. It's already on my Flickr page. So it's just that easy um, to, uh, to bring it up on your Flickr. So that is what I wanted to bring to you to the table today about mobile photography. Now, we also talked about, Jack, we talked a little bit about um, uh, the iPad and how today these mobile tablets, I was with my son yesterday at Best Buy, and we found, um, oh my, there was a whole rack, and I even told my wife, I said, there's a whole rack of so many different tablets out there, and I don't know if you guys remember, I'm kind of in the business, but Microsoft tried to bring out a tablet PC about 10 years ago and it got hit with so much opposition that they just scrapped the whole entire project and it's funny because now apple does it 10 years later all of a sudden everybody's making tablet uh, tablet computers or tablet whatever you want to call them uh, it's definitely not an e-reader i have a nook that i used to read on you guys know that but uh, this is the ipad now what's nice about that and i said i probably can walk away out of the house and go on vacation with just the ipad and not take my big laptop, my big, heavy, bulky laptop. And all you need with the iPad, it's really neat, is you spend $30 and you buy this little camera kit. I'm going to try to um, bring up my other camera here so we can get a little bit better view of some of this stuff. This is the actual camera kit. It plugs right into the port in the bottom of the iPad. And you slip your memory card in. Here's the memory card. And now it's slipped into the little dock. And all we're going to do with that now is just uh, turn the iPad on. And uh, we're going to just plug it into the end there, right there in the end of it. And you're going to see it comes up and it says, hey, I found your photos. Do you want to import them? Does that look familiar to anybody? That's exactly what Photoshop does, right? It imports our pictures. We say yep. We say import all. And it's going to go ahead. And just that fast, it import our pictures. Then it says import is complete. You want to delete the pictures off the memory card, just like it does on the computer. We're going to hit keep because I might want those for later. Now I go back and there's my pictures right there. Now I can take my uh, memory card reader out and uh, put that safely in your in your camera bag so you can have that for next time. But now my pictures are already downloaded on something that I can edit them with. And I like the bigger screen of the iPad. That's why I was showing this to you. And again, let me find it because that's the only thing I found bad about the iPad is uh, where all the where are all the applications. And that does get bad. And I'm looking. I will find it here for you. Yep, I'm still looking. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, it is still it's on here too. It's um And I don't know why I can't find it. Let's go back to search here and see if we can't find it. There it is. Okay, so. Here is Photoshop Express. Now this iPad is the iPad 1. It doesn't have a camera built into it. But there's the last picture I imported. And again, you click on edit on the top. And again, you can see how easy it is to do the tinting or any other editing I want to do right on the iPad. Then I can share that out right to my sharing sites, and I'm good to go. Uh, the only thing I would suggest about an iPad, if you don't already have one, is I would suggest buy the, uh, buy the one with more memory. Think about this. Your, most of your memory cards, uh, this particular iPad, I think, is the 16 gigabyte model um, of iPad. The particular memory card that I just stuck in there is um, four gigabytes. So it would hold every picture on that particular card, which you know yourself is a ton of pictures. So you can get away with it. But I would suggest to buy yourself either a 32 or a 64 gig card is what I would suggest. Okay, folks, we are going to open the phone lines just in case you'd like to call in there and uh, see what's on your mind today. Uh, remember, next week I will not be here. Uh, we'll be on a vacation. I'm going to also check out uh, Kevin, though. Uh, like I said, it's not the iPad 2. It is the iPad first generation. Uh, but uh, it works extremely well with both. So I like to have an iPad 2, but now I'm waiting for the iPad 3. Um, when the iPad 3 comes out, I may look into purchasing one. Just like I said, like trying to break the bonds with my laptop. Um, that's a thought I've been having for a while. So, folks, I believe we covered everything we wanted to cover today, mobile photography, mobile editing, and then we had that little uh, video in there to tell you how to do abstract photography. And, again, you were the first to see that video. Yay! <laughs> anyway, you know, hey, be that what it is. Um, you were the first to see that video, and that video will be going up on YouTube in case you want to watch it again or you missed any of it. You can definitely catch it there, so... So if you have any questions right now, you can reach me at either Skype me at Jack's Tech Corner. Love to talk to you this morning. Or you can call me at 724-701-0911. I am available for uh, calls at this time just to see if anybody has any questions. Or throw it in the chat room and I will answer you there. I don't see anybody in there. And actually, guys, I know we talked about it a little bit, and I just wanted to throw it out there again. Um, I would like to thank our sponsors. Um, and if you're looking for a Nook, if you're looking for a Nook, uh, now's a great time to buy a Nook. You know, reading is going to become even more and more uh, important during the winter months, right? When we start getting stuck in the house, we can't do anything. So you can pick up your Nook book and read today. So check out Barnes & Noble and go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and you'll find a link on the left-hand side of the page for barnesandnoble.com. Please, if you're going to buy a Nook or anything from Barnes & Noble, click on that link and go ahead and purchase whatever you want. And that actually, uh, that credit helps to show. The last part of that, I'd like to thank our other sponsors for the show uh, that we don't talk about every show, just to uh, quickly mention them. We do have Roku. If you want to uh, watch a show on your TV set, uh, Roku is the way to go. Uh, you can get Roku and get the live Justin TV channel and bring, uh, bring this show right up on your TV set. Sit back with your coffee cup, enjoy, and I will see you... Um, on your TV set in your living room. 
Also, Green Screen Wizard. I know a lot of you guys out there know Ken. I've had a call the other day that said, Jack, I bought Ken's software and I totally love it. Uh, Ken's a great programmer, so you can check out the Green Screen Wizard. And if you need any hosting services, oneinone.com. That's who hosts our website. Well, actually, we pay to have it hosted there. I mean, they don't do it for free. Um, and that's why on my website, I always talk and tell you everybody about the uh, donation button. So just in case you want to donate to the show. But hey, thanks for everybody joining this show every week. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm very humbled that you guys always stop by. You know, we usually have anywhere from 10 to 15 viewers on this show, and and uh, that's great. Kevin knows when we started, I think it was me and Kevin. We'd sit here and talk about photography. And uh, now we have everybody else joining in with us each and every week. So until next week, have a great week. Um, and, uh, well, until week after next, have a great week. And remember, keep those shutters clicking. Keep the editors editing. And don't forget, get your phones out there and get some mobile photography going on and put them up on our uh, Jack's Tech Corner Facebook or um, put them up on Google Plus or now put them up on Flickr. I expect every, all of you to have a Flickr account uh, by the end of the day, even the free accounts. Um, but remember, even sign up through that through my website. It's free. Just sign up and uh, become a member of our group. I know Kevin's on there and I've seen a few other ones on there. So. Well, thanks to each and every one of you out there for watching Jack's Tech Corner and this week's Photoshop Elements episode number 19. I'm glad you was able to stop by, and as always, I'm very humbled. Please take the time to check out my sponsors on the website, jackstechcorner.com. All the sponsors on the left-hand side. Uh, please go ahead and pay them a visit. So, until next week, I'll be back here. And as like I said, as always, keep the shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon on... Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.